Welcome to the Ultimate Property Management Virtual Masterclass Part 2, brought to you by Real Estate Investor. Uh, today's masterclass is officially sponsored by We Connect You, developers of intelligent property management software to enable you to scale and deliver more value to your clients. Real Estate Investor and We Connect You really have a common goal, and that is to fast track property or prop tech in the property management space. And uh, we want people to adopt it into their businesses. More importantly, today we'll actually provide you with the education, the direction, the tools on how to build a scalable property management business. And most importantly, how to effectively manage your prime property assets. This is critical. Such an important function for an investor and also for the property manager on the other side. Many detractors say that property managers do lack innovation. And if they don't embrace prop tech, that will certainly die. And there has been an influx of several tech companies disrupting the property management space recently that promises to transform the old traditional real estate industry as we know it. Great, uh, Neil. Thank you for that nice introduction. Yeah, and thank you for being the co-host with us. Um, yeah, I think to start off with, for us, it was amazing to get the incredible feedback after the first Ultimate Property Manager Masterclass that we had in, in February. Uh, we first introduced the topic of asset management during that webinar. And yeah, we received incredible feedback and also a lot of questions about precisely what does it mean to become a rental asset manager. So today, I'm going to further unpack this topic for us and help all the audience members to see, first of all, the importance of this. And secondly, try to equip them to start seeing, of the, um, start changing the business from just being a rental portfolio manager and start becoming that rental asset manager that we all believe should be the case. So starting off, uh, I think I would like to recap uh, a few topics that we discussed in the first um, uh, masterclass in February, just looking at the biggest challenges that face, uh, property managers face. And that's really gonna pave the way for us to discuss the difference between a rental asset manager and a rental portfolio manager. And then lastly, the tools to equip yourself to become a rental asset manager. All right, so let's start and uh, let's agree on what we all believe are the biggest challenges that rental agents face out in the market. There are many, but if we have to summarize them, we believe we can summarize them in these four core um, aspects currently shown on the screen. So number one, compliancy. Um, Marlon will later um, elaborate on some more legalities that rental agencies should comply with, but there are, are a host of them that a principal should ultimately keep his finger on the tabs with, with regards to, let's just take FICA, you mentioned Poppy a moment ago, uh, FICA of every client that they are dealing with, a critical aspect, and obviously with the new law in place, definitely something that every principal should be managing with a close eye. And unless you're doing it in a more tech-enabled environment, it's almost impossible to know how compliant your business is on that specific aspect. There are more compliance aspects like your financial processing compliance, your lease renewal compliance, and I can probably carry on a little bit longer about all the different legalities um, that is upon um, um, managing agents to be compliant for their business and also on behalf of their landlord in managing a lease agreement. Secondly, I guess this goes for any business, but to manage a business, you have to measure a couple of key performance indicators. Now, to improve manageability, ideally, you should have an environment where all the key performance indicators of your business is managed and reported on, let's say, a single dashboard. So manageability, especially if you're not, let's call it, fully tech-enabled, is almost impossible, especially as your business scale. An incredible aspect for the, the principal or the business owner to keep his finger on the tab with. Thirdly is scalability. Scalability does not mean more properties and more people managing them. Scalability means you're growing your business and ideally your staff complement uh, specifically, but obviously your overage should stay the same or should scale at not the same rate as your income is scaling. And that is only possible with automation. So any property manager that is fortunate to grow his portfolio aggressively would understand that unless they create some automation in their business, uh, the overheads always grows with the number of properties, which really defeats the objective of growing. 
And then lastly, obviously, if you're going to scale effectively, you would be more profitable. Um, but most businesses are really in the rental environment, really struggle to make good profits. Uh, the typical rental book size in the country on average between 100 and 200 properties. Uh, for that, you need quite a few things to have be in place. And it's really difficult to make it to build a really good profitable business. Now, I think, if it, unfortunately, the audience can't all answer all now, but I think all of us agree, these are typically the major challenges that any rental portfolio manager struggle with. Now the question is, how do we I overcome these challenges? Because these challenges are typical of the challenges, if we look at that picture on the right, that prevents me of just taking that leap and growing that business that I always thought I would like. The profitable business, the business that's really in control, we're delivering a good service to your clients, you're growing effectively. Um, yeah, and, and, and unless we solve that, it's almost impossible to make that leap into a nice, healthy business. So to do of to solve those four challenges, unfortunately, there is not a silver bullet answer for like one thing that we can give you guys today that will solve that uh, as a single solution. So firstly, we believe the first thing you have to get right is you have to have a business model that is structured for growth. Uh, this by itself could be a separate topic we can have maybe in the next uh, masterclass, but this is something that you have to have in place clear structure and roles and responsibilities aligned with that to enable you to address some of those issues just mentioned. Secondly, critical is you have to have standard operating procedures. Most rental agencies, they start, it's one person, uh, he or she is the agent, they the account manager, they the maintenance manager. But as they are growing, standard operating procedures becomes impeccably important to ensure continuation of good service delivery. So if you do not have a SOP for almost every activity that is happening in your rental portfolio, I can promise you there's gonna get a time in the growth of your portfolio that the service will drop, you will start losing business, and uh, yeah, definitely profitability would be definitely impacted considerably. So if you do not have standard operating procedures, you have to get this in place to enable you to grow effectively and to maintain the growth, meaning not losing your clients as you are growing due to bad service. And then lastly, you need to be tech enabled. I think in today's day and age, the concept of scaling is critical. And unless you do have um, a tech enabling you to scale effectively, creating automation in your workflow, it is impossible to address those four core pillars or four challenges I mentioned earlier. Well, what does it mean to be tech enabled? Uh, we would like to believe you have to create ecosystems, uh, which is ultimately certain functionalities you have to have in the integrated environment to create that automation that enable you to scale. So from a rental perspective, the business of rental and portfolio management are really based on four core pillars. It's a tenant application process, the rental account management process, lease management, and obviously inspection and maintenance management. And unless you have the, these four aspects uh, solved in one integrated environment, it is almost impossible to create a scalable business. You can even further carry on and say, well, I need to have integrated communication models because without that, I can't manage effectively. I need to be bank integrated to ensure that my transactions and payments happen as seamlessly as possible. I should definitely have automated area management because that will always be part of, of rental management. And if I'm doing community management as well, maybe I would like that to be integrated as well. These, all these things are potentially possible out in the market from a technology point of view. And if you are a rental manager and you don't have this, these kind of ecosystems, um, I'm not saying you can't build a business, but it's impossible to unlock the most amount of efficiencies within your business. Okay, so that, that is kind of the baseline of addressing those four core challenges. Now, we have clients that says, well, I've, I've got the perfect business model. I've got amazing SOPs. I've got the technology, but still I'm losing business. So I'm growing, I'm doing all the things I should, but I'm still losing my clients on a daily basis. So you're working so hard to gain your business and you are getting that right, but, but you're actually losing your mandates on a regular basis as well. And throughout the country, we obviously interview our clients and, and the reasons why this is happening. And the biggest reason why this is happening is they are losing mandates to their clients, meaning private landlords opting to rather manage the property themselves. And I would like to call this the silent killer. 
the thing that is slowly just eating up your business, yes, you are growing, you're getting your five or 10 new mandates every single month, but you're losing almost the same amount of mandates of landlords just opting out to manage the property themselves. They, they, they would like to save on the commission. Um, they may be upset about maybe service, or whatever the reason might be. Now, we would like to address this and obviously uh, um, uh, kind of position this as the main reason why we believe you as rental portfolio manager should reposition yourself and become a rental asset manager. Okay, so let's quickly start by looking at our client, the investor. So also properly referred to as the landlord. I think all of us agree that yes, there are landlords, but in principle, they are investors. They have decided to invest in a specific asset class, which is called property, and uh, they've got certain expectations and needs. This is a slide that I also showed in my previous presentation. And if we look at our clients' needs today, and we interview the typical uh, rental portfolio manager and ask them, what do you think an investor landlord is looking for when they walk into your office? The typical answer that we get throughout the country is, well, I think they want me to find them a tenant. They want me to collect their rent for me for them on a monthly basis. If needed, I, do, I have to manage the maintenance management. I've got to effectively manage arrears if there is any. And then obviously I've got to manage the lease for the client. And that is ultimately what, if, if, the, if, our, if the rental portfolio manager believes that is the need of the landlord, they are going to build a value proposition that, that just addresses this. And this will always be part of rental portfolio management. We'll never get away from this. But what we believe the client ultimately would like to hear is the following. Mr. Investor, what our business does is we optimize your return on investment. We help you to reduce your risk in this investment class. We are going to guide you on helping you to grow your portfolio. And we're going to provide professional reporting you to enable you to make good investment decisions. So unless you understand the principle of your client, meaning being an investor, and his ultimate needs, we're always going to struggle to address it effectively. So we really believe the concept of just being a rental agent and finding tenants, collecting rent, doing maintenance management, lease management, and I know there's quite a few other things a rental agent does as well, but I want to say the conventional activities that we believe we as rental agents should be doing if we believe that, that is our ultimate world, we believe the industry is going to be challenged and we continue to lose properties ultimately to their clients because a client can do, all our investors, landlords, can do all of that themselves. What we believe the future are, are clearly is we have to become rental asset managers and we have to start communicating in a new language, uh, which is the language that our clients, the investor, ultimately would like to hear. Another massive motivation, again, if you say, well, no, man, I'm not, I'm not into that. I, I don't, I'm not really convinced. As long as I find a tenant, my landlord is happy. Why else would we want to consider becoming rental asset managers? So this is a slide that uh, I got from The Economist, uh, the sources of Willis. And this is writing the global values of asset classes in the world. And I'm not sure if you were aware of this, but property is the biggest asset class in the world being managed. So I think we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to the industry and the size and the importance of this asset class as an investment destination for investors. Secondly, in any business, if you would like to build a value offering that clients would like to buy, that's a product or a service, you have to understand your client's needs. Now, I've just kind of clearly elaborated on what we believe are the ultimate needs of the investor. And that is to find someone called an asset manager to manage his asset and report back on his asset. And unless we're going to change our value offering to address this, yes, the investor might start, might find a different solution. And in this case, typically manage the, the asset themselves so that they can get the information that they need to make good investment decisions. All right, so let's look at what should be done to help you to become a rental asset manager. So what should I understand? So firstly, you've got to understand the characteristics 
of property as an asset class. So there, there's a kind of a, a new language that we should understand because the, that's the language our client, the investor, is looking to, to kind of communicate with you in the way they deal with you. Secondly, we have to understand what the property performance matrix is. So if, you, if I invest into property as an investment class, there's certain kind of key performance indicators I look at to make sure that my asset is performing well, or if it doesn't perform well, uh, to kind of indicate to me to typically potentially offload this, uh, this property. Then to understand the property performance matrix, I've got to understand a couple of calculations, how to calculate yield, capital gains, and return on investment. Typically, that's the three property performance matri matrices that most investors look at. And then lastly, the question is, besides finding a tenant and besides doing a very good lease agreement and arrear management, which is all incredible, important activities, to protect my client's asset and reduce risk, what else can I do to help my client grow his portfolio. So let's unpack these four aspects um, and they help us to equip ourselves to become a rental asset manager. So let's start with the characteristics of property as an asset class. So firstly, generally the asset class has got a lower risk and lower return than equities. So equities, obviously the stock market, you can go and invest and if you choose the right uh, investment, something like Amazon, over time, you can have fantastic returns. But typically, risk and return always go hand in hand. So the higher the return, the higher the risk. And property almost has got this healthy risk return ratio. And that is why it's become one of the biggest asset classes in the world. Secondly, which is an amazing aspect of property, is you can leverage yourself. Typically, in property, we leverage ourselves nine or ten times, meaning I've got a hundred thousand rand, but I buy a property of a million rand because I can get a bond or a mortgage from the bank, allowing me to get a much bigger exposure from an asset value perspective. Then the return consists of both capital gains and the income, so the cash flow portion, which is, which is an amazing aspect of property as an asset class. So you've got two basically income streams, your capital gains and your rental income, your cash flow aspect of it. Then, which is also amazing about property, it's considered to be quite a good inflation hedge. So basically the prices tend to kind of rise in line with inflation. So sometimes if you do an investment on the stock markets, yes, you're getting quite nice capital gains, maybe a six or seven or eight or 12%, but you still have to equate inflation into it. In property, typically the property prices, obviously depending on area and time of the, of, of the economy, of the cycle of the economy, but typically property prices kind of is a good hedge against the inflation prices, inflation percentages. It's definitely less sensitive to the economic, economic cycles. I think all of us were quite surprised last year when the stock market fell considerably because of COVID-19. We in South Africa, we saw property prices actually increasing because of the re re reduction in the, in, um, the interest rates which came about just after that. So compared to the stock market and equity market last year, property was definitely a lot less sensitive to the economic cycles out there. Location, location, location. I think this is something we're all very familiar with. But what does that mean with regards to uh, uh, investment in, in this asset? So first of all, it determines your risk. It determines your return and definitely also determines your liquidity, meaning how quickly will I be able to sell this property if I would like to um, get some cash in hand. So a location will and probably is and will always be one of the most important things when you are investing into property as an asset class. Maintenance cost, probably one of the downsides of property as an asset class. You probably will never get away with it. And if you don't uh, manage it proactively, you're probably going to struggle to have a proper good return on investment on your property. Um, and then lastly, low liquidity, high transactional costs and related administration taxes, again, will always be a good part of the downside of this investment. If you manage it well, the upsides, the first couple of points, definitely exceeds the downsides. And this is why property is such an amazing asset class as an investor, for the investor. Okay, so these typical, um, uh, let's call it this new language, should be something that you guys understand. So if a client walks into your office and kind of have a discussion why property is a good investment, these are the motivations and the downsides which you should be able to discuss with your client. All right. Next up is the performance, property performance matrix. 
So understanding what yield is, understanding capital growth, and understanding ROI is a critical important thing. Clients, typically investors, they come in and say, well, I'm looking for a property that can give a yield of a certain percentage. So they don't, they don't, they're not really buying property. They're buying a percentage. So unless you understand what the client means and how to calculate this, you obviously won't be able to write with this client. And if you are getting a seasoned investor, um, two investors we will speak to in a moment, this is the kind of language they speak. Are they looking for it? Are they chasing a specific yield for their portfolio? Or they're looking, they've got a certain investment strategy uh, where they buy and sell, and they're looking for a specific percentage growth in that. And obviously those two combined will give you the ROI of this property investment and obviously how to calculate that. So if you don't understand it, it is critical that you do. Let's look quickly and how you typically would calculate these three uh, property performance matrices. Now I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. Um, there's slightly more detail than just these uh, three calculations, but I just wanna give you a bird's eye view how typically these three uh, performance matrices are calculated. Okay, let's start with yield. That is typically the cash flow portion of your investment, the rental income that you receive. So first of all, we take the total income. So that is obviously the rental income, but you might get additional income from parking or advertising space on the building. Um, obviously any other recoveries you're making, getting from the tenant for utilities. So, so total income that you get for this property on a monthly basis, or sorry, annual basis. You minus that by all the operating expenses. And maybe I can just point out that does not include the interest um, that you pay on the, on the bond. Uh, but basically all other property related expenses you in, uh, incorporate into operating expenses. And that will give you then the net operating income. The net operating income is in other words the net income you make from your property on an annual basis. You divide that by your purchase price and that will give you a percentage which we refer to as yield. So that's basically the cash flow portion, the net cash flow portion of your investment over the purchase price as a percentage. Next up is capital growth. I think all of us are quite familiar with this. So uh, to calculate that, it's very easy. You take a value at the specific date, typically in the past. You take the current date, typically 12 months later. And over the last 12 months, if you deduct the current uh, um, value of your value at the specific date, you'll get your capital growth value. Um, and uh, if you take your capital growth value and you divide that at the value at a specific date, then that will give you your capital growth percentage. And then lastly, return on investment. That's typically, if you just add, I can see there's a plus sign missing there. You can do it in two ways. I put the, the easiest way is just adding the percentage yield and the percentage capital growth together, and that will provide you then with your ROI, your return on investment, on your property, incorporating both the capital growth as well, well as the cash flow portion, the yield portion of your investment. So typically a solutions can do these calculations for you, but you have to understand typically how these values come together to be able to have a valuable discussion with your client. How else can I as property manager add value? See, so if you just find a tenant and you find uh, do a good lease and do a real management that are critically important parts to be able to add value to your asset but there is more that you can do so let's think about it you can you should always chase for the boss, best possible rent or best possible escalations for your landlord you should try to add longer leases typically in a commercial lease uh, of a commercial property. Uh, if an investor is looking at the, buying the property, they're looking at the lease term of the property. And the longer the lease term, the less risk there is for the investor when he's buying this property as, at a specific yield typically. So the longer leases definitely would add more value in this investment. Be innovative, try to unlock more income streams from this investment. Uh, again, typically in commercial, you might be able to unlock income from parking it. You're not using it. You can rent out to other tenants in the surrounding area. Increase GLA, the gross letable area um, in a property. So typically, again, if I can use commercial as example, you've got these big warehouses. They may sometimes don't have a loft area. If you build a loft, that increase your letable area, and you might be able to get a higher rental income or more um, letable area to let out to potential tenants. For all properties, a critically important part is managing maintenance proactively. 
the more proactive maintenance is managed, the less maintenance should be there, of, uh, less maintenance cost in managing it reactively if and when it actually happens. We've seen that throughout. And if you are more proactive, definitely you are going to have a lower maintenance bill. And typically also sometimes you get a higher rental if the property presents better. Then you are the expert in the field. And uh, the investor is expecting you to equip him with the necessary information about what is the market trends where he's invested in. So that's a specific suburb, uh, area, the specific, the specific type of property. So market trends is something that you should be able to provide to your investor on a regular basis, equipping him to help him understand how well his, his asset is performing in comparison to other assets in the market or what specific market segment is doing well that they potentially should invest in. And then lastly, I think this is the ultimate. You should continuously hunt for new deals based on your investment, investors' investment criteria. So if you don't understand what type of property your investor is looking at, typically you can't, do, can't actively um, hunt for a deals for that investor. And I think this is probably one of the greatest value. If I get found as an investor on a regular basis, listen, man, I've got this great deal for you. This is the kind of yield that we can, uh, that this property will give you. Um, I think that's a massive amount of value that um, our asset managers can give. All right, I would like to start ending off by saying, all right, so now we've heard about the importance of asset management. We, hear, we have just kind of took you through what are the critical aspects you have to understand to become a rental asset manager. But now lastly, how do I put this into action? How do I equip myself as a first step to become a rental asset manager? Because it's going to be a journey. It will not be an overnight thing. What are the first two nuggets that you typically should get in place tomorrow to start becoming an asset manager and repositioning your business to be aligned with that? Well, I want to first show a slide that this is again a, a slide of a, a, a um, internet clip that's currently live on the web. Um, I always took the name of the client off. But this is typically what rental agents are market themselves for uh, as a service. You can see we are very proud to offer the following services. And that's a list of typical services that a rental agent today kind of promote themselves with. If this is still your value offering to your client, you are definitely going to be seen as a rental agent. And although you would never get away from doing these things, I would like to say more, this is how you're going to manage the asset. But the what you're going to do is ultimately looking at the investment as an asset class, increase the, the return investment for the client, and you should start communicating that to your investor. So maybe we should change that kind of communication to something looking more or less like this. We position ourselves to say, hey man, we are rental asset managers. We focus on growing your investment. And with our experience, we can enable you to help and grow your portfolio. So the first thing is, for all, the, for all the agency or the principals out there, make sure your advertising agency pop in tomorrow. Design something like this for yourself. Change the email signature on your email address. Start creating um, uh, marketing material like this that when you sit in front of your client, the investor, that you speak his language and that they can see you as the rental asset manager and the value you can offer as an asset manager instead of just, just finding a tenant being a rental agent. And I think the ultimate is the next step. You would, should start reporting to your client as an investor. And this is something that your clients typically would love to see. Something, uh, asset management report that reports typically on those three property matrices I just spoke about, yield, capital growth, and ROI. Some other property performance matrices, looking at his mortgage, his annual returns, some graphs about his annual return, and then obviously the capital growth. And ideally with some comments about what the market trends are doing. I believe this is the game changer in the market is starting to report to our clients the way they're expecting us to do. And I promise you, once they start seeing these reports in the end, the way they see us as property managers will change dramatically. Every single time I get a report from, let's say, an Alan Gray asset manager, um, I'm very impressed with the quality of reporting and the insights they provide in these reports for me as an investor to make good investment decisions. We as a property market owe, uh, owe it to ourselves and our clients to manage this asset class called property in the most professional way possible. And I believe this reporting is the kind of key link to help the industry to start transforming them from just being rental asset or rental portfolio managers to become 
the rental asset managers we believe what the future is. So I would like to end off by the following. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we as a property management market should change the way we see ourselves. We are not rental agents, we are rental asset managers. We should change the way we communicate and report to our clients, the investor. We should change the way our client sees us. And ultimately, I believe we should change this industry from just being property managers or rental agents to become the rental asset managers we really are. Thank you for your time and uh, yeah, looking forward to an interactive Q&A session at the end. Thank you, Neil. Johan, that was spoken like a true professional. <laughs> and I think it's a great way to start. I think you set the scene incredibly well. And, uh, and I think the way that we need to start thinking, as you've said multiple times, we're running a business. It's, and, and, and I think many investors over the years have just kind of used it as kind of like a part-time kind of thing. And, uh, and for many, it's grown into a massive business. So thank you, Johan. Mm -hmm.